As DM said, his DND character can't jump 10 feet carrying 8 to 5 pounds. Can he prove him wrong? 85 pounds of weight. How you feel? I'm Kyborg. <laughs> I'm Kyborg. I got this. Really good idea. And this goes hand in hand with a video I thought I saved a while ago from another creator who was talking about how much of a barrier to entry character creation is to D&D. And if anyone remembers that video or creator, please tag them in the comments. How many of us have had someone who has been interested in learning how to play the game and then sat down to make a character, got really frustrated, and then quit? Is it most of us? I think it's most of us. Here's where I think starting with backgrounds can really help because there's way more options for them to choose from, they're far less mechanically complicated to explain in the game, and I think they're closer to what we imagine in our head when we first come up with a character concept. Personally now, since we've gotten to a point where we're like, okay, I want to make a daring swashbuckler, I can do that with any class. More or less, you know. Starting with background gives something that's much clearer and easier to latch onto to create the rest of your character around. Instead of starting off as like, yeah, I want to be a magic user, you now know I'm not just a magic user, I'm a scholar. I'm someone who has spent years studying and learning. And now you have an opportunity as a DM to ask them further questions to really enrich their backstory. Okay, your character studied for years in libraries. You found this ancient magical tome. Do you want to have deciphered it with your own intellect? Do you want it to have like unlocked some kind of hidden potential inside of yourself? Or do you maybe want it to have contacted some ancient patron that granted you powers. Just help them pick a class completely on their own, completely through their character's backstory. Thank you very much for the comment, Dash of Nerds. That's an amazing idea. I absolutely will be using this to teach new players in the future. I got a video request to show how I make my water feature. I've started off by creating this sort of cavity. You may notice that I have a lot of hot glue in That's because I need to seal up all of the cracks of the epoxy will find any space to leak out. I've used my stone painting technique to paint it all up. I'm using these three colors here to create this murky green brown. And I will paint what's going to be the bottom of my little pond like so. And I've actually also thrown a little bit of glitter in there. And you can thank my wife and tortoise mom for that, but I think it's a fantastic idea. So I've added some flocking down in there. So to recap, I created what's essentially a bowl here that will hold all of my epoxy. I made sure I sealed all the cracks and crevices with hot glue, painted this all up to look like stone. And then I went in here and what will be the bottom of my little pond, I painted to look very muddy and murky, and I did some flocking. I need to let this all thoroughly dry, and I will come back tomorrow and pour the epoxy. All right, now for the damage roll. Oh, sweet, max damage. Ah! Dad, can I go out partying with friends? Roll. Uh, <laughs> I have a seven. What's your modifier? For your son, a plus two. Uh, or like a minus one. Hey. Can you roll this for me? Uh, why? Just, just roll it. 18? What's your perception modifier? That's plus four. Okay, you get the sense that your wife is hungry. Oh, crap. Uh, okay, what do you want? <laughs> Where do you want to go? <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> we have a tornado warning going on. The sirens just went off and everything. Uh, and so rather than hiding in the basement like a normal person, I've decided it's going to be a fantastic idea to roll for initiative and try to fight the tornado. That's a 17. I'm going to go first on this one here, chat. Um, I'm going to try and roll to seduce it and see how that's going to go for me here. A three. I get it. I, I get that, yeah. I'm going to go inside and hide. Using AI Dungeon to create an OC has been by far the most interesting method of character creation. You see, AI Dungeon utilizes artificial intelligence to create randomized encounters for your character to participate in. Admittedly, while AI Dungeon improves its stories with each update, some of my interactions that I've had as my Witcher OC, Steve, have been anything but peaceful. Need something? No.
You see, I raise my family I'm sorry. in this. No. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Violence is a character quirk, and I managed to collect a lot of stories because of the AI. Stories that you'll be seeing in future videos. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sky God, you really shouldn't kill me. Well, why not? If you kill me now, you won't get Earth God's powers. Okay, that's bullshit. Not even you know if that's how this works. You're probably right, but deception check. This is gonna have to be pretty fucking good, considering he's a god and should know how this works. Okay, I rolled a 19. Not good enough. That's Hold on, I have proficiency in this. Well, it's still only like a 24, so... Up, up, up. I also have expertise. You rolled a 30. Mm-hmm. I'm so angry. Well, what'd you set the DC at? 30. <laughs> oh, no. You didn't want me to succeed on that at all. <laughs> the player's handbook said DC 30 is nearly impossible. It is, but boy, howdy, did I just do it. The sky god looks at you and says, When will be a suitable time for our fight? Oh, in like eight hours, I just need to take a nap. You're just gonna take a long rest and then immediately fight the sky god? I'm all out of action, sir. Just may as well just take a nap nap and I'll be good to go. The sky god is much stronger than the earth god. As was I, now I'm gonna take a nap! Celebrating Pride Month in this video by using all the colors of the rainbow. Okay, so now I'm tracing the outside of my nerd's candy continent, tracing my lakes and the outside of my islands. Then I like to go over the pencil with a black marker. This helps outline the coast and all the islands so you can figure out where you want to start putting landmarks. Now, I take a fine point blue marker and I trace the outside of the continent and the islands one more time. This represents the shallows. Then I take a fine point black pen and I go around the outside of the continent and the islands making small lines and hash marks and dots. This helps to represent the water movement around the continent and the islands. It's really cool looking and it just helps to bring a lot of life to the map. So I hope you like this simple coastline method. Let me know if you want me to continue with this continent and show you some other simple ways to do landmarks like towns or houses, mountains or forests. Bad traits to give your D&D classes. A barbarian who faints when he sees blood. A necromancer who can only bring back his ex-girlfriends! Oh, now you call me back! Now why don't you go fix your face before the ugliness kills me again? A ranger who is blind. A druid who has allergies. Oh my gosh! Stop mowing the grass! Can't even transform because I'm allergic to fur! And a bard who uses his charisma to do TikTok dances. My first build, my largest build, my favorite build, my cutest build, my current build, and they all have playable interiors. What do we do now? What do you mean? Now we can finally play the game. Oh yeah! The adventure begins, they were always beside you, your nerd hate best friends, and the DM to guide you, and they rise from the flames for the battles ahead. Villains beware, cause you're about to be dead. Just in your circle! They got magic and flair, they got falchions and co- Okay. Get the fuck back in there. No. No. Get back in there. Uh-uh. 